Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to another series of lectures in uh, LIS 2010, uh, which is the uh, Organization of Information Resources, which is basically looking at cataloging, uh, classification, and information retrieval. Um, the last time we were looking at uh, the functions of uh, a library catalog. Uh, and we noted that the major functions of a library catalog um, is the information retrieval. To enable a library user to retrieve information uh, if, uh, by, by either author, by title, or information on a given uh, subject area. We also note that um, it helps the user to locate the information, uh, to know exactly where the information is found in the library, and also to to, to, to make a choice as to the kind of information that they want to get, either by uh, a form of, uh, of, material, of literature or by edition or by uh, format, whether it's an electronic version of that material or a hard copy. We also noted that uh, library staff also use catalogs in the collection development and in the management of stock, uh, stock taking and, uh, and weeding. We want to look at, um, uh, to take a further step by looking at uh, uh, the functions of a, a library catalog from a perspective of uh, Ranganathan's five laws of librarianship. Uh, Ranganathan uh, is a, a famous professor, Indian professor, uh, who defined the, uh, the functions, the laws of librarians, uh, librarianship. And uh, to just uh, look at them, we uh, have not put them in the right order, uh, but uh, the, usually the first one come as listed here as number four, is that books are for use. Um, books here is used now as a generic term to mean all the information resources that we have, whether electronic, in electronic format, uh, whether it's a, a book itself, or a CD, uh, but these materials we acquire in the library are for use. And uh, then um, uh, uh, we need to save the time of the user or the reader. Uh, every reader, uh, every book, it's a reader. Every book in the library must have its reader, or every information resource must have its reader. And um, um, then um, uh, every reader, his or her book. And then the last one is that a library is a growing organism. So now, looking at these uh, principles of librarianship, which I believe most of you are familiar with, yeah, because you, you learned them particularly uh, in your first year, in one of your first year foundational courses. Now, uh, how does the library catalog help to meet these uh, uh, principles of librarianship or the five laws of librarianship as defined by um, Ranganathan. In other words, how can a library help to, uh, the, uh, how can a ca library catalog help to, to us to as library managers or uh, librarians to meet uh, these five laws of librarians. First of all, um, using a library catalog, the main purpose of a library catalog is to inform the, a, 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 a library user what is available in the library. So rather than the library user going to check on the shelves uh, indiscriminately or at random, uh, the catalog helps the user to save his time to know what is available before going to the catalog, going to the shelves. So it saves uh, the time of the library user. Using the catalog saves the time of the library user. Using the catalog, uh, the library user will be able to know what is available for him or her. So. Uh, uh, the books that are in the catalog, in other words, the catalog is like a marketing tool. Mm. It markets what is available in the library. 
without a catalog, some materials may not be known. So as a result, the catalog enables um, a, 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 the library materials to be known by the users and to be found by the users. Then the catalog also helps the users to make a choice of what they, they need in the library. So in other words, every user or reader will be able to have his or her book from that uh, vast collection that is in the library. Do I want an electronic version of this book? Do I want to watch a, 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 a clip or a movie or, you know, based on a particular book and so on? So that means that uh, the catalog helps to meet that particular uh, uh, law. What about uh, uh, books are for use? Well, if, 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 if imagine a situation where the, you have thousands of books in a library, like the Library of Congress or most of our university libraries, they have thousands of materials. Now, um, these materials become unlocked, become known, become useful because of the catalog that is there. And finally, a library is a growing organism. A, a, a library acquires new materials. So as it acquires new materials, the collection expands, it grows and grows. But we know that a growing organism, also uh, as it grows, it shades away some of the you know materials that are useless or life recumbent, the cells that die out, or when they are eat, Again, the human body will excrete or remove uh, that is of waste, not necessary. So, in the, using a catalog, we can weed out obsolete materials from the library. So the, the growth, as a result of using the, 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 the catalog, helps to ensure that the growth is systematic. It uh -huh. doesn't just happen. One, using the catalog effectively. Yeah. Yeah we can remove without materials that and as the library is growing it should not keep on growing and keeping obsolete or materials that are no longer relevant that are outdated so using the catalog we weed out those materials that are not useful the materials that are outdated that have been overtaken by advancement in science and technology because we need a collection that is active, that is relevant to the users and the communities that we are serving. So I think uh, from this perspective, we, we can look at the catalog and see how does the catalog help us effectively to meet uh, the five laws of uh, librarianship as defined by Ranganathan. So it's a very powerful tool. It can be used to meet those five laws. Um, so, how, how, how about um, looking at a, the catalog from a perspective of a functional requirement from a bibliographic record as, as set out or done by IFLA? Ah, kindly speak to that. Ah, if, if, uh, uh, and uh, ah. other um, key stakeholders have ah. come up with what is known as functional requirements of, um, um, of biblio... Graphic records, yeah. Graphic uh, records, which we write usually in short as FRBR, or some of us pronounce it in short as FEBA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, functional requirements of bibliographic records, uh, uh, these were defined as requirements of any bibliographic uh, records. A bibliographic record is a record um, when you are creating catalogs, you create records of books and other information resources. Biblio coming from book. Mm. So a catalog is a, actually a set of records. So now, IFRA has defined um, what are the strict requirements for any good catalog, whether in electronic form, whether that catalog is in book form or in print form. 
And these, in short, are the requirements are four. They are, in short, known as FISO or FISO. Uh, F stands for to find. I stands to uh, identify. identify. Yeah. And S select. stands for to select. And um, O stands for to obtain. So these are four. Now, if you relate these to what we talked on earlier on, on the, the purpose or the functions of a catalog, uh, any bibliographic record that you create when you are processing or creating a catalog, you create, uh, we'll talk about later in one of the lectures of, on what is uh, how to catalog or create a catalog. Now, you need to, inf to, to, to ensure that uh, uh, that catalog is helps you to find materials. Uh, that function is critical. It also helps to identify uh, the materials. Um, you find the material, a record of that material, then you identify that material by, by looking at the attributes that has the author, title, edition, uh, publisher, place of publication, all that information helps to identify that material. Where was it published and so on, edition and all that. Then to select, once you have identified the materials that you want in the catalog, you select those materials. Um, which are now relevant to meet your information needs. Then you obtain them by going to the shelves. The catalog will tell you where the material is found by looking at what is known later, we will learn about it, the call number. So there is a number that tells you, uh, or a code on the catalog which shows the location of that material. So a catalog helps us to do um, these five functions again uh, we need to know can this catalog help us to find out what is available in the library in a particular library to identify uh, these information resources that we need and distinguish them from each other and to select them and then to obtain them finally well brilliant um, thank you doc I think um I'm sure the students will be able to see what um, this. I think they're, what this is expected of uh, of them as um, as students on how when they're given assignments to write, they should be able to to, to with, with this information they should be able to look for 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 the information they want and be able to retrieve it and 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 and, and uh, identify, select the the actual thing they want and be able to obtain. But um, as as students of library information science, I think in, with time, as this course progresses, mm. they'll be able to, um, to, 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 to at least create a listing, you know, of what is contained in a particular library. It could be a departmental library, it could be a library at home, you know. Um, mm. I expect that students will be able to come up with an inventory, a catalog of that, and, mm. and, and be able to describe mm. them in a way that other people are, are able to use. So I think this is... Um, uh, brilliant, I, you know, I really appreciate it. Looking forward to the next uh, discussion. Wow. Please, thank you, Doc. Thank you very much.